Good morning. This is Jeff from the Cyber Pro Podcast, back with another episode. Today we have Max Shufton, who's from the Sands Institute, who's going to be giving us a very interesting perspective of building non traditional and reskilling existing cybersecurity talent pipelines from the educational perspective. Very unique. So, with that, I'm going to hand the mic over to you, Max, and say, Good morning. And if you could share with us in a few lines a little bit about who you are and what you do. Great. Well, good morning, Jeff. Uh, thanks for having me on the podcast today. Um, I am the director of cyber talent programs at the SANS Institute, a global cybersecurity training organization. Um, and there I lead a variety of programs and manage different partnerships uh, with organizations where we work together to really focus on reskilling and upskilling the cybersecurity workforce to bring more people into the field, um, managing adult programs where we retrain people from non-traditional backgrounds to move into cybersecurity and youth programs where we encourage young people to pursue careers and greater education in the field, um, all to build the next generation of professionals in cybersecurity. And there's also an emphasis often on increasing diversity, equity, inclusion in the field uh, to make it more diverse. Well, you're going to make it hard for me to keep this podcast under 10 minutes, but here we go. Uh, You you mentioned a couple of different things in your introductions, which are are very interesting. I'm going to name three, and then I'm going to ask you to pick one. You named uh, upskilling existing folks, reskilling some folks who are coming from non-traditional backgrounds, and three, uh, encouraging our youth to get into this area. These are all huge things when it comes from an operational and educational perspective, because as we discussed right before we got on the podcast, up until now, because cybersecurity is so new and evolving so quickly, it's been hard to democratize or create a system where people can get into the system um, equally, as well as be able to learn the basics before jumping off into their own specialty. So with that, which of those three do you find the most compelling and why? Yeah, I'd say what I've found the most compelling and just the work we've done to date has been kind of those adult reskilling programs where you're working with individuals who aren't coming from a security background and helping them get into the field. Um, You know, seeing that impact of Uh, finding people with real passion and aptitude who might not know they have it, that kind of hidden talent, providing them training and learning opportunities and certification to kind of validate their new skills um, and might not otherwise be able to afford that kind of training through scholarship programs has been the most impactful and and compelling. You know, seeing those stories of we've seen students who were, you know, working as diesel mechanics and moved into a sock analyst role after kind of a four month training program. Um, or those who were in like an accounting position and moved into pen testing, um, using their critical thinking mindset to learn new skills and then apply those skills in this industry. And and that's been most compelling from my perspective. Yeah, I'm going to drill down on that question a little bit and change the next question. Um, you, You made another very compelling statement about how part of reskilling involves the necessity to carve out time and resources, financial and otherwise, to change these people's directions because they may not inherently be in the cybersecurity world to begin with. And as we all know, uh, the number of cybersecurity professionals that we are going to need as a nation, as a world in the coming decade is going to be significant. So let's talk about that. Like how are you able to uh, create or find or partner programs that allow folks who are mid-career or otherwise make that transition uh, into cybersecurity? Yeah, no, great question. Um, in terms of finding them, it's, it's really been an effort that we've uh, built up over the last six years here at SANS, but it hasn't been solely, you know, from our perspective in terms of driving it. Uh, we found that working with organizations focused on communities that are, you know, set to serve people who might not look like your everyday cyber professional, especially from 2015 when we started these initiatives. So we worked with different nonprofits uh, uh, focused on bringing more gender diversity and racial and ethnic diversity and cybersecurity into the workforce. Um, just to name a couple, uh, Women in Cybersecurity or WESIS, uh, the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu, 
and Cyversity, which was formerly called uh, the International Consortium of Minority, Minority Cybersecurity Professionals, but renamed this year. Um, and each of those is focused on getting more women, uh, Black, Indigenous, and people of color into cybersecurity and serving those communities. So working with those organizations to try to reach folks, to let them know about this career opportunity, let them know that you don't need a four-year degree to necessarily come into the field. You know, you don't need 10 certifications. What you do need is passion and aptitude and then a training bridge. It doesn't have to be 10 years long or five years long, but you do probably need to build some foundational skills that once you get into an employer, they will continue to invest in you and train you up. Uh, and then you need to have kind of soft skills as well. But um, I know I'm kind of on a tangent here, but to kind of come back to your question, it's been working with diversity focused organizations to reach different communities, um, let them know that there is a pathway and a place here for everyone in cybersecurity. And we need the field to be more inclusive and welcoming. Dang, Max, you, you just, you, you keep hitting me on the head. I'm, I'm going to come back with you with one more question. Diversity and inclusion, right? That's a big buzzword these days because it's true. And cybersecurity up until now, as I think we would all agree, has been predominated by Caucasian males. You know, let's be honest. So as we move into the future and as we realize that the world encompasses so many different shades, however you want to name those shades, uh, how is it looking forward going to impact our ability to deal with threats and to, as you just said yourself so well, be able to reach out to folks to say, hey, you know, this is uh, a, a career path you can do. Uh, what does that look like to you? Uh, in terms of the process to, to get that message out there? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, again, it's a, a collaborative efforts needed, you know, so working with those different nonprofit partners to spread the word, you know, encourage members from their current organizations, members of the communities they serve um, to pursue cybersecurity. But then it's also about kind of showing the story of people who are successful. Mm. Right? Um, you want to be able to tell that story. Like I think of, uh, we had somebody named Deja in a, in a reskilling program in Baltimore who was working in a coffee shop um, as a barista. And, you know, about six months later, she's a cyber risk an analyst for a local tech company. You know, did she come into that training program and just get the technical skills and then get the job? No, she also kind of, when we talked to her after, what she mentioned was big for her was, you know, being, going through that kind of program with other people who looked like her, who had the same, you know, perspective as her, so they could build camaraderie and learn together. And then also leveraging her customer service skills from working in a coffee shop were really important, she said, in both the interview process and when she started her new job at her company, because she was already really good at interacting with people. And so uh, what we found when building these programs, be it on our own or with partners, is that, you know, you've got to find people who are passionate, who are problem solvers, critical thinkers, but who also either have good communication skills or can develop them um, and then get them technical training and sometimes soft skill training as well so they can be a good fit for employers. Then on the flip side, uh, you know, we also need to have the employers bought it to uh, being ready to hire in new ways, not just looking for four years degrees, four year degrees in cybersecurity or computer science, but looking for people that are self-driven, have passion, might have been through some training on their own or or none, but have really been doing things on their on their own online, like um, you know playing capture the flags and joining cyber clubs and meetups, uh, and really trying to to get that kind of information out there so employers hire from those perspectives. And at the same time, working with community organizations to encourage people to pursue those types of non-traditional learning activities. Yeah, yeah, I'm smiling because you're absolutely right. And we're running out of time here, but it's a two-way street, right? You've got the folks who are coming into the, into the cybersecurity world, but then you've also got to modify the viewpoint of the person doing the hiring as well. That's another battle. That is a challenge. That is a challenge. Indeed. That, that is a challenge indeed. With about 30 seconds left to go, tell us a piece of retro technology that makes you smile. Uh, well, I'm an, I'm a, like a late 80s, 90s kid. So for me, it is a Sony CFD boombox, you know, just being able to walk around and have something that's playing music, but so that everyone can hear. <laughs> uh, and I mean, even though they're old and I know most people don't have any more, I was still using them as recently as like four years ago. Uh, with friends, you know, playing softball I'm in Chicago. So my friend's softball team in Chicago, we would bring a boom box with like a, a mixtape on it and everybody had their walk-up song uh, for when we went up to the plate. 
the bat. So Sony boombox, the CF, CFT boombox for me, for sure. Nice. Max, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Jeff. Great to be here today. Hey, thanks for watching the Cyber Pro podcast today. We've got over 100 episodes and you can find them right here.